children. We're here on an initial permanency hearing. Mr. Alvey's with us for the department. Ms. Nelson's with us for CASA. Uh, Mr. Adams is with us representing the children. Mr. Pertle's with us representing the mother. Ms. Atkins, who is with us. And Ms. Lucero is with us representing the father, Mr. Atkins, who I show is still incarcerated in California. Uh, Ms. Lucero, you weren't expecting your client, were you? Your Honor, I was not. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. That accounts for all the parties. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Ms. Erica Flores. And where are they currently placed? They are in a foster home. In what county or city? Um, they are in Pampa. And uh, is that placement meeting all of their needs at this time? Yes, sir. Uh, are, are the children regularly attending all of their uh, appointments for physical, uh, emotional, and mental health care needs? Yes, sir. Um, are, are either one of them receiving counseling at this time? Yes, sir. They're both receiving um, therapy. Any special issues or special needs that have arisen for either child that we need to make the court aware of today? No. Children's mother is Miss Jennifer Atkins. Yes. And Miss Atkins uh, has been ordered to work services through a service plan. Has she begun working the services in her service plan? Yes. Um, has she completed any of the services on the service plan? She has completed um, four services recommended on her family plan. And what were those? Um, she completed rational behavior therapy. She completed her psychological. She completed OSAR. And OSAR recommended an IOP virtual outpatient program. And she did complete that on March 8th as well. Are there other services on the service plan that she still lacks completion on? Yes, sir. And, and what are those? Um, she just started counseling in February. Um, I have only received two of those from Mellie Birch. Um, parenting classes started March 6th. And um, we have not started NA or AA. Um, and her the Texas Panhandle Centers has also not been completed. And she actually discharged herself from her TPC evaluation. Now, part of the concerns when these children were removed from Ms. Atkins were her mental health and her uh, possible abuse of her prescription drugs. Yes, sir. And has she drug screened lately? She, yes, sir, she has. Um, she, not for the month of, um, I did send her on Monday. I have not seen those results yet. They're not in. Um, she did test on March 11th, um, and that came back positive for opiates on codeine. And it was a fairly extreme amount. And did you discuss those results with Ms. Atkins? Yes, um, I did let her know that she did test positive and that we would need her to send in her prescriptions to the, the lab. Um, and they told her that they wouldn't accept the prescriptions. So I called and asked what we needed to do. And they said, given that the, the high amount, the levels that were on there, there was no need to call her because she was obviously abused. She was taking more than the daily dosage on her medication. And she's not doing the NAAA, and she discharged herself from the uh, TPC uh, evaluation. Yes. Does that mean that you still have concerns that it would be it would be unsafe to return Utah law in Montana to her today? Yes. Um, are you still working with Miss Atkins to see if she will complete her services so that we can return possibly return these children to her? Yes, sir. Um. I received notice that there was a uh, change in the uh, final uh, disposition or, or recommendation for this case. Did y'all make a change? Yes, sir, we did. And what was that change? Um, we went to um, primary um, unrelated adoption, and then secondary is relative fictive kin adoption. And have you talked with Ms. Atkins about that? Yes, sir. So she understands that our goals now have changed so that we're looking for adoption for these kids as opposed to returning them home. Yes. 
And, and that's because of Miss Atkins' um, slowness in alleviating the reasons for the removal. Yes. It doesn't mean that if Miss Atkins doesn't complete some of the services and show that she's able to have a safe home, that we would not return the children to her. Yes, of course. Children's father has been named as Taylor Atkins. Have we found Mr. Atkins? Yes, sir. Um, he is in California at the Avenal State Prison. And uh, my notes show that he is in there on an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon charge. Yes, sir. And do you have any idea uh, what his sentence is? Yes, he is not. He is supposed to come out um, November 25th of 2025. So more than a year from now. Yes. Um, and has there been any correspondence between you and Mr. Atkins? I did send him a letter. Um, I did give him an update of his children. Um, in the letter that I sent him, the envelope, I sent him additional envelopes to write me back. I included my email and my phone number as well. In your testimony has given me a number of things that you've been working on. Do you believe you've taken reasonable steps to attempt to reunify these children with uh, their parent, with yes. the boy's parents? Yes, sir. And um, would you agree with me that it's not safe to return either child to either parent at this time? Yes. And that it would be contrary to the children's general welfare to do so? Yes. Are you asking then that the court continue the department as temporary managing conservator of these two boys? Yes, sir. I'll pass the witness, Sean. All right, thank you. Ms. Flores, I read in the report that uh, Montana had been diagnosed as with cross-eyed and that the doctors think it could be due to physical abuse and he might have possible brain damage and needed an MRI. Has that been scheduled? No, sir, it has not been scheduled. Caregiver is calling um, and it should be around this time that he should have it. Okay, but yes. that he's on track to get his MRI, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, based on the the test results for uh, Ms. Atkins in March, is does the court need to order another OSAR assessment to see what, obviously, if she's done her drug treatment and then is still abusing prescription drugs, we need to do something else. Do we need to start with another OSAR? Um, yes. I mean, if we if we can get her reevaluated, yes, sir. Every provider that she has has recommended her at least do TPC or so, yes, we would recommend another OSAR. Well, okay, so TPC would be a drug treatment program instead of just a mental health evaluation or? Oh, no, sir, no, the OSAR is a drug treatment, yes. Okay, all right. And you mentioned some contact with Mr. Adkins. Has he been provided a copy of a service plan? No, sir, I am waiting for him to hear, I'm waiting to hear back from him. I did give him an update for him to call me so that we could go over that. Okay. If you don't hear from him, go ahead and send it to him so that at least he'll know what he needs to do. Yes, sir. Has he indicated, are there any services available that he could do while he's in prison in California? I'm not sure about California. I would have to call to see if they have those available for the, you know, for the prisoners inside. The, their okay. Jail. Okay. All right, then. Uh, Mr. Pirtle, questions? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Judge. Is uh, you're you're saying you're thinking your primary goal now is uh, unre unrelated adoption? Yes. And do you have somebody who has expressed a, a desire to adopt? Yes, sir. His his placement. They are interested in adopting the children. The children have been moved to Miami. No, sir. That is the school. Um, the children were going to Pampa School there but they were getting bullied. So caregiver transferred them over to Miami to go to school there and they are doing very well there. And your effective kin adoption, who do you have place to place for that? Um, we are still looking. Um, I am going to submit a search on, on Jennifer's behalf and on also on Taylor's to find other caregivers. I have been in contact with Taylor's side of the family. And at this time, they are not interested in adopting the children, but do wish to, you know, remain in contact with them. How does Ms. Atkins feel about your change of goals? Um, she, 
didn't like it. Um, and I expressed to her that, you know, it's just a change of goals and that it did not stop her from reunifying with her children as long as she continues to do her family plan of service. Pastor Willis. All right, Ms. Lucero. Ms. Mm -hmm. Lotus, um, I have also reached out to my client, Mr. Atkins. Um, would you just, if you hear back from him, um, would you um, let me know? And also, I'll be reaching out to you if you're okay with that to uh, maybe speak to some of his family members. Um, would you be okay with that? Of course. Okay. Yes. All right. Your Honor, I don't have anything else to add. Like I said, I have not heard back either from, uh, from Mr. Atkins, but um, I will continue to follow up with him. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then, uh, Mr. Adams, questions? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Flores, neither of these children are on psychotropic medications? No, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, then. Uh, anyone have other questions for Ms. Flores? Mr. Mm -hmm. Alley, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. We rest. All right. Thank oh, you. Mr. Your Honor, I, excuse me. I would ask a couple more questions of Ms. Flores just to follow up on some things. Okay. Ms. Flores, um, are you requesting any drug screens to be ordered today? Um, no, sir. I would. I sent her to drug screen on Monday. So, okay. yes, sir. And uh, do we have any? Is Miss Atkins exercising any visit any visitation with the boys? Yes, sir. She's been making her visits um, on Mondays from five to six. And are we asking your interest the same? I'm sorry, Mister Alvi. Could you repeat that? You cut out. Sure. Are you asking that those visits increase, decrease, or stay the same? Um, we could, um, we can agree on giving her an hour extra for her visits for, for her, um, uh, face-to-face -face visits with the children. All right. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Anyone else? All right, Mr. Alley, you know the witnesses? No, Your Honor, we rest. Mr. Pertle, witnesses. I'd like to call my client, Jennifer Atkins. Now, you know, CPS or St. Francis has said they've changed the goal here from reunification with you to um, unrelated adoption. And are you familiar with the foster parents? Um, I've seen her a little and talked to her very, very briefly just about what was going on with the boys. And do you believe that she's uh, a good placement? She seems nice, but I've heard rumors about the husband in Utah didn't seem himself when he's around him. Are you asking for the goals to be changed back to reunification for you? Yes, sir. Okay. And how do you explain the, the failed drug screen on April 2nd? She called me in for a drug screen and I had just taken my pain control medications. But that was Mr. just... Oh, excuse me. I believe the failed drug screen was in March. See, the April results aren't back yet. That's what I understood the testimony to say. Oh, you know what? I'm looking at the uh, the filing the when it was filed, Judge. Okay, so how do you explain the failed drug screen in March? Well, I had just taken – that was the one, the second to last one. Yeah. I had just taken my pain control yes. when I went to that drug test when she had called for it. I actually found out. I didn't realize it was a text I missed. I found out on the way there. So um, how can you assure this judge and, and CPS, St. Francis, that um, you've changed your life for the better, you're doing better now, you're going to be consistent with that? I have people all around me. I have a very big um, circle of supporters that are helping me, and I have a good job that I can't take my medications at a job at this job. I'm not allowed. Um, I've been omitting, uh, getting rid of some of the medications because uh, Erica doesn't like that I'm on so many of them, and so I'm working with my doctor to get off of some of them, or at least on lower doses. Okay, so you've got a plan with your doctor to try to stop your medications. That you, you, you can you feel that be unnecessary or may interfere with other drug interactions? Yes, sir. Okay. I pass the witness. Mr. Alvey, any questions? Not at this time, Your Honor. Pass the Ms. Lucero? Questions, Your Honor. Mr. Adams? No questions, Your Honor. 
All right. Mr. Pirtle, did you have any other witnesses? No other witnesses. Ms. Lucero, witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. Mr. Adams, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. All right. Then, Mr. Adams, recommendations? Your Honor, I've talked to placement. The, ch the children are doing really well in placement. It's It's been a big improvement that they've moved from the Pampa schools over to the Miami schools, and they're making sure that they have everything they need there. So I, I would recommend the placement stay the same and that uh, the department remain with temporary managing conservatorship. Okay. All right. Thank you. Casa, anything to add? Nothing to add, Your Honor. We agree with Mr. Adams. Okay. Okay. Then I will continue the department's temporary managing conservator, continue the children's current placements. I will order uh, that Ms. Adkins submit to a second OSAR assessment and follow any recommendations. And I will order that uh, Ms. Adkins successfully complete the TPC assessment and follow any recommendations. All right, our next hearing will be a review hearing on July 31st, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance of July 31st to see exactly Mr. Alvey is with us for the department. Mr. Michelson is with us representing the children. Ms. Lucero is with us representing the father. Mr. Garcia, who is with us. Mr. Taylor is with us representing the mother. Ms. Garcia, who is with us. That accounts for all the parties. I have uh, Letha Little and Brian Armendaris in the waiting room. If, if both of those could be allowed in, Judge, I would appreciate it. Judge, I've previously talked with Mr. Taylor briefly, and he's not had conversation with his client. And he, he would like to talk to her before, and then I'd like to talk to him after that. In the meantime, okay. I, I would also like to talk to Ms. Little and Mr. Armendaris myself concerning an agreement I might be able to reach concerning Mr. Garcia. Okay, so... All right, I'll, let me, I'm making a note because I'm having to do this a different way today since, well, it doesn't matter why. So. Okay, so I'm going to put Mr. Taylor and his client in one room and put Miss Little, Mr. Armendaris, and you in another. Is that right so far? That is your Thank hey, you. Thank you. Got it right. Okay. All right, I believe everyone's back. Where do we stand? Somebody else need a breakout room? Maybe with Mr. Taylor, Your Honor. All the attorneys are just who? Right now, just Mr. Taylor. And you? And me. Okay. Go ahead. Well, judge, if, if it please the court, we would ask that the court um, order that Ms. Garcia and Mr. Garcia Espino be ordered to work services specifically for Ms. Garcia. We would ask that she be ordered to uh, complete rational behavior training, parenting classes, uh, a wave class, and individual and family counseling, and have a lot access to the children to the department. Um, as far as Mr. Garcia Espino is concerned, Your Honor, we would ask that he be ordered to work. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Gustavo is no longer inside this chat room. He's not kicked out due to service, so I don't want him to miss any of this, but he, he needs to be let back in. He's in the waiting room. I'm getting him in. All right. I just didn't want him to miss anything. Sorry. My bad. Mr. Taylor, I don't know if this is something you need to talk to your client again, but based on the report I read about the continued domestic violence between these two for their five-year period, uh, I'm going to order that she do a domestic violence class. If you need to talk to her about that to see if she's still in agreement. Show you the Wave class is a domestic violence. Uh, well, my understanding, Mr. Evans, my understanding is wave class is equivalent to a BIP class for women if they're the if they're the perpetrator. Now, I've I've had people tell me that's true, and I've had people tell me they're not sure whether that's true or not. So, if anybody here can enlighten me, yeah, I, I can't. You are. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> well, I, I can't. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, my, I'm going to order the domestic violence class, uh, the, the domestic violence group. If I'm correct, and the wave class is uh, for a female perpetrator of domestic violence, I'm not going to order that because I didn't read anything that says that the mother is the perpetrator. If you I'm wrong. Correct. Sorry, if you're wrong. you are correct. Okay. Who, who's that? Who told me that? Uh, me, Kayla Martinez. I'm the supervisor. Okay, good. Thank you for that. I've been, I've been, I've been told so many different things. Well, uh, yeah, we, our, 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 concept genre is that she would take the 
victims class, if that's that, and better. that that is the that's the domestic violence group. Wave as if she were a perpetrator, and unless the department's got some evidence she's been the perpetrator, then I'm not going to order her to take a wave class. So we, we, okay, we would withdraw so, that request. Mr. Then, Taylor, is, is that a, is that okay with you? Substitute DB group for the wave. I don't feel like I need to visit with her prior to the order, but I do want to visit with her to clarify that after after we finish okay. the hearing on her. All right. Sorry to throw a monkey wrench in there. So, Mr. Alvey, then what are the services for Mr. Garcia? For, for Mr. Garcia, Your Honor, we would agree. I think the agreement is that he would agree to work rational behavior training, uh, parenting classes, individual and family counseling at this time, Your Honor. Uh, he has not been officially charged nor uh, arrested for any domestic violence at this time. Um, so we would agree not to ask him to do the BIT program because we don't need him to confess to something that he hadn't been officially charged with uh, up until the time he actually is officially charged. If that happens, then I'll explain to Ms. Lucero that we would come back and ask that the BIT class be included in services. Okay. All right, I'll go with that for today. But at the first compliance hearing, uh, I mean, I, the report I read from Mother's own statements is that he has committed domestic violence. So I'm not going to make Ms. Lucero commit to it today, but uh, I may not be willing to dismiss this case without a bit class down the road, just so everybody knows where the court stands. So, okay, uh, let's see. Then, Mr. Taylor, with, with the exception of the domestic violence group substituting for the WAVE class, is this your client's agreement? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Lucero? Uh, subject to the court's ruling in the future, I won't order the BIP class today, but other than that, is this your client's agreement? It is, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Michelson, you've heard the agreements. Are you in agreement on behalf of the children? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then. I will approve that agreement. Uh, I will order that the parents uh, participate in the services that have been outlined, specifically that the mother complete the rational behavior training, parenting, individual and family counseling, uh, and the domestic violence group and that she allow access by the department in St. Francis to the children. I'll order that uh, the father complete the rational behavior training, parenting, uh, the individual and family counseling at this time. And again, I'll reserve ruling on whether or not the court's going to require a bit class in the future. Okay. I appreciate y'all working that out. Uh, Mr. Alvey, do you want a compliance hearing? Please, Your Honor. Um, 45 days or so okay i've got let me see all right then uh i've announced the uh, order has agreed to by the parties so i will set a compliance hearing for june 5th 2024 that will be by zoom like today's hearing so parties and attorneys can go on the courts online uh, children a child, day or two in advance to see exactly what uh, mr alvey is with us for the department casa is with us mr harris is with us representing the child Ms. grant is with us representing the mother miss lingenfelter who is with us and Mr. Pertle is with us representing the father, Mr. Lingenfelter, who is with you us. You can call your first witness. I call Ms. Cassie Kovic. And where is the child currently placed? He's placed in a foster home in the in Central Texas. And um, is that placement meeting all of this child's needs? Yes. Now, my recollection is this child has some pretty severe medical needs. Is that home capable um, in the expertise to meet all of those needs? Yes, the, the foster home is a medically needy home and the foster mom is a nurse, so she is capable of taking care of all of his needs. And is she making sure that John is attending all of his medical appointments? Yes. Um, how's he doing in that home? He's doing great. Um, has has he been gaining weight appropriately? Has he been meeting some of his milestones? Yes, he he's in physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and feeding therapy. Um, and he gets those on a weekly basis. And he is having all of his needs met in that home. Um, his mother is Miss Leslie Ligenfelter and his father is Matthew Ligenfelter. Yes. And they were ordered to work services uh, have they begun working services through the service plan? Yes. Have they completed any of the services in the service plan? Yes. Which services have they completed? <clears throat> they, they completed 
individual counseling, a psychological evaluation, rational behavior therapy. They did an autism parenting class. They did a regular parenting class. They have housing. They have employment. Um, they they have ongoing couples counseling. Um, and then they have visitation with their child. Um, before we get to visitation, are there any services that were ordered that they work in the service plan that they have not completed at this time? The only thing that they have that's ongoing is the housing employment and the couples counseling. Yeah. Because of the child's needs, is it important that they have face-to-face -face contact with the child? Yes. And have they been exercising face-to-face -face visitation? They, they haven't ever missed a visit. Um, the visits are virtual. We did have, or they did go down at the beginning of last month to have a face-to-face -face visit in the foster home. And were they able to demonstrate that they were, they had the knowledge and the skills to take care of the child's uh, medical needs when they did their face-to-face -face visit last month? Objection. Your Honor, objection, unless Ms. Public observed the visit. You, you broke up. I didn't hear your objection. Can't hear you. Your Honor, I'm sorry. I was objecting unless Ms. Coppock personally observed the visit. Did you see the visit, Ms. Coppock? Yes. Okay. Overruled. Thank you, Judge. Uh -huh. You can answer, Ms. Coppock. Um, so when we went down there, I talked to them because the foster mom had all the, the therapy set up during that time. So he had the four different therapies while we were there. So I did talk to them about observing um, and they they did observe, observe the, the therapies and stuff like that. Um, the visit was a little awkward. I mean, it's been a while since they've seen seen their child. I mean, they did they did interact with him, but <laughs> it was a little you know, awkward for the first time that they've seen him in a long time. And how, how long ago was that visit? Um, It was the 6th of March. And have they had any more face-to-face, -face, not virtual, but face-to-face -face contact with the child? No, they, the foster home's nine hours away. Um, and I've talked to the foster mom and she said we could come down there again at the end of the month for them to have another in-person visit. In your opinion, is it important for them to be for the parents to be able to demonstrate that they can take care of this job before we begin any type of um, reunification? Yes. And at this time, are you asking that there be any further orders from the court concerning services? I do think that the parents would need a CPR class. One of the things that the foster mom had said is that he'll pocket food in his cheeks and. Objection as to hearsay from the foster mom. So you're asking for an additional CPR class? I, I think it'd be beneficial for them to have a CPR class in case, um, you know, he's choking or anything like that where they can, you know, get that out taken care of so that he doesn't choke. We've also discussed the possibility of the child moving closer so that there could be more face-to-face -face visits with the parents. Have we begun looking for a, a closer uh, foster home? I've been working on the placement request, but I haven't got it fully submitted yet because of all this medical needs. I need to make sure that the Common App is done very thoroughly. Today, would you agree with me that it would be unsafe to return this child to his parents? Yes. And it would be contrary to the child's general welfare to do so? Yes. Are you asking that the court continue the department as temporary managing conservator at this time? Yes. Pass with Ms. Young. Right, thank you, Ms. Grant. Ms. Kopic, would you agree that the weight issues that were experienced with this child at the beginning of the case have now been determined to be underlying medical issues that are ongoing and need to be managed? Can you ask Objection, that? Your Honor, speculation if she doesn't know that. Um, ask the question again, Ms. Grant. Ms. Kopic, would you agree that this child has many underlying health conditions that will require long term management? Yes. I'm, I'm going to let her answer that. Yes. And would you agree that the parents need to be trained? Yes. <laughs> Uh, 
as to that training, I have a terrible connection. I'm not going to it's not really good. Nice. Okay, my apologies. Uh, Ms. Kopik, would you agree that the parents also have work schedules that we've talked about need to be managed for any more face-to-face -face visits? Yes. And so when you set those visits, um, you will be considering their work schedules uh, in conjunction with the foster family's schedule, correct? Correct. Okay. And in fact, this case was attempted to be mediated since our last court hearing. Would you agree? Yes. And we have not reached an agreement in a mediation, but have recessed that immediate mediation to continue at another time. Would you agree? Yes. Essentially, we just don't have the information yet that we need or the demonstration of the appropriate medical skills to return the children home today. Yes. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Let me ask you this. Has, has my client done everything CPS has asked um, for services? Yes. And has he gone over and above, even followed like extra things he could learn off of YouTube? Yes, he's done everything we've asked him to do. Okay. Why can't we find a home closer to him rather than nine to 10 hours away? I, I am working on putting in a placement request. Um, why he got moved down there in the first place is because of the medical needs. And he's in a primary medical needs foster home. So there's not a lot in this area and that's why it was placed down there what's the probability of finding an, another home up here i i don't really know i've only had a couple of kids that were medically needy that were in foster homes here and it's been a long time ago so i don't really know is, is was the department or st francis's position right now that the the parents of this child really just needs more hands-on interaction with their child. Yes, I think that they need to be able to demonstrate that they can take care of him, um, you know, on their own. And because we don't want John to end up in a situation like he was when we, we removed him. Pass the witness. Mr. Harris. Ms. Copic, are there any other services that can assist the parents with, with their medical issues with the child? I just think that they really need to have like a CPR class so that they, you know, are trained on that. And then I think they just need to have more visits with John and uh, seeing how like the feeding tube stuff works and the therapies. Are there any classes that they need to take with regard to the to the G button? I. I've looked for classes for that and they did do an online, um, like an online training for the G button. Um, but I think hands-on would be better for them because, you know, looking at it on a computer is a lot different than, you know, doing it in person. Right. But right now we're looking for a closer placement. We just want to make sure that the, that your application or all your paperwork is very thorough. Is that correct? Yes, it, it needs to be very thorough and it, it, it'll be a hard adjustment for John too because he does have the autism and then probably a lapse in services as well because when if, if there is a placement available here and he's transferred, it's going to take a, a little bit to get stuff set back up like with therapies and things like that and nursing hours and all that. Okay. <laughs> but right now we need to leave him where he's at. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Pass the witness. All right. So, Ms. Coppett, John is getting some home health nursing now? He does. He has it. It's during the day. Well, I guess his foster mom, a nurse, she works during the day? No, she's she's there, too. Um, there's okay. another child in the home, but they, they have the additional nursing hours so that she's able to, you know, manage her day-to-day -day tasks okay. and have a constant eye on John. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have further questions for Ms. Coppett? I would like to follow up with one judge. Okay. Ms. Coppett, you mentioned that... Um, you need to thoroughly complete the medical evaluation for a replacement change, correct? Uh, can you ask that again? I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you mentioned that you're filling out uh, paperwork to evaluate the change request, correct? It, it's, it's called a common app. It's got all the information on it so that the placement team can use that to help uh, locate a placement. Okay, and how long have you been working on that? I talked to the parents last week because um, they 
you know, would like for him to be moved closer. And so about a week. I've had other stuff to okay. do. Okay. Is there anyone, since you haven't had any medical cases in a very long time, is there anyone that you need to assist you in completing that or assessing the placement? Nobody needs to assist me in completing the paperwork. I, the, the placement team is the one that finds placement. I don't, I don't do that part. Okay. Pass the witness. That was my question. Thank you. Pass the witness. Anyone else from this topic? <clears throat> All right, no, Mr. Brown, have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor, we rest. Ms. Grant, any witnesses? No, Your Honor, I rest. Thank you, Mr. Pertrell. Rest. <clears throat> Mr. Harris. Your Honor, I have no uh, witnesses, but I do have a recommendation. All right. All right, Mr. Harris, your recommendation? Your Honor, I believe the child needs to remain where he's at. Um, if there are any other services that can assist the parents with the medical needs of the child, if we find those, if we can do court orders on those. And I would like a uh, another drug screen done. Looks like a couple of the drug screens came back. One was canceled, one was diluted. So if we can order a, a full drug panel um, as well, Your Honor. On the parents? Yes, sir. Both parents? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, cost anything to add? Your Honor, we agree with Mr. Harris. Um, we have concerns as well about the um, return of the recent drug screens. So we would like to see a hair follicle and UA drug screens. Um, okay. Ms. Lingenfelter also reported to us that her mother's a nurse and she would be a possibility for a home study. So um, before John is moved, just for the sake of getting him closer, if, if that's a possibility to, to get a relative placement, we would like to see that home study completed first. Is it your understanding she's willing to accept John? I don't know that, okay. and I don't have her name. Okay. Where uh, where are the Lingfelters living currently? Anyone? They live in Tampa. Tampa. Uh, where? Yeah, they, Tampa. Okay. So where are we where are we drug testing now in Tampa? Prestige. Prestige. Okay. Your Honor, may the may we make one request on behalf of the mother? Sure. Just that the court leave the visitation fairly open in the order to allow as much supervised face-to-face -face in the home as the parents can participate in in order to get that training and contact with the child. Yeah, no, I, I heard the I heard the testimony. I don't I'm not going to necessarily order that there be more because they've said they'll allow more. I'll just it sounds to me like everybody's working as best they can to to make visitation in person happen with a nine hour difference where the kiddo is. So, OK, I agree, Judge. Okay, give me just a second. Okay, then I will continue the Department of Temporary Management Conservator, continue John's current placement. I'll order both parents to submit to a hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. today at Prestige in Pampa. And I will order that the parents complete the uh, CPR, uh, complete a CPR class. All right. Um, I'm, I'm announcing that we're going to have the final by June 5th but I can't necessarily, I can't guarantee that because uh, Mr. Pirtle has requested a jury trial. Ms. Morrow is working on that now, but I, we don't have a date yet, a courtroom, et cetera. So uh, I'll go ahead and set, I'll announce the final set for June 5th, knowing that that may change. We will keep everybody notified uh, as to when that jury trial will take place. <clears throat> and, um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with the mediation, but as, as everyone knows, if, I, if we have to extend this case till we complete the mediation, we can do that because uh, this court doesn't set finals, contested finals that haven't been mediated. And I, I will, I'll extend the case if we need to, to get that completed. So, all right. Your Honor, Mr. Alvey may correct, might correct me, but I believe we did, were able at mediation to reach the one agreement that we agreed to an extension. So I believe we'll be sending the court an agreement on that situation okay uh, i have to from what i've heard today i think that's very likely and probably necessary so Especially okay with the jury request so yeah stay in recess on this case Josh, i'll be back you, here in just a few wave. minutes to call another gray county case. he's here on zoom judge we're, we're ready to, i know you haven't called the case yet but we're both here and ready thank you judge I, I actually was in the middle calling it so uh back to that mr nowak is with us representing the father mr mccauley senior who is with us mr jackson is not with us 
nor is his client, Ms. McCauley. And let, Ms., Mr. McCauley, you're, Ms. McCauley's not with you, is she? You can shake your head yes or no. He's saying no. No, she's not. Okay, thank you. All right, this case was set for 11.50. It's 11.55. We will proceed in uh, Ms. McCauley and Mr. Jackson's absence. I'll watch the waiting room for either of them. I have Michelle Slagle and Tina Perez in the waiting room. Where are they currently placed? They are placed with their aunt and uncle in Pampa. And uh, is that placement meeting all of the children's needs at this time? Yes, they are. Um, are the children uh, regularly attending any medical, dental, and mental health appointments that they may have? Yes, they are. Um, any <laughs> special issues or special needs that have arisen with either child that we need to make the court aware of today? Um, no, everything's the same. Joshua... Uh, is still in behavior therapy and um, Gracie's in speech therapy. In, in the current placements, making sure they attend all of those appointments. Yes, they are. Children's mother is Desiree McCauley. Yes. She was ordered to work services through a service plan. Has she begun working those services? Um, she has did her psychological, um, psychosocial. She attended two um, counseling classes and she did her Ozar. Um, since then, she hasn't did anything. When I visited with her in February, she stated that she was not going to work any more services. Um, when was the last time that you had contact with her? Um, actual face-to-face -face was February 22nd. Um, I've tried to communicate with her um, by text message, and, and she does, like you can see that she's read it, but she does not contact me back. Um, she did yesterday, I mean, I'm sorry, today to make sure the court hearing was at 1150, but that was the only contact I've had with her. So you did attempt to give her notice of today's hearing? Yes, I did email it to her. Would you agree with me that um, the reasons that the children were removed from her have not been alleviated at this time? That is correct. And uh, that it would be unsafe to return either child to her at this time? That is correct. Contrary to their uh, general welfare? That's correct. Um, do you know where she's living and what kind of job she has anything about what she's doing right now no sir i'd know nothing of her situation at this time she did state that she um, wanted to give tmc of the children to her aunt and uncle um which at that time i told her she would need to contact her attorney um if that's something that she wished to do child's father is joshua mccauley yes sir and have you, he was also ordered to work services through a service plan. Has he begun working the services in his service plan? No, sir. He was recently released um, from jail in February. I had a couple of text messages um, corresponded back and forth. Um, and then I did not hear from him until yesterday when I was able to get a new phone number for him. But I did visit with him yesterday. And um, did he provide you with an address where he may be living? No, sir. I, honestly, I did not ask him for an address at that time. We talked about um, getting services started and in staying in contact with me um, and drug screening. You believe that, that it's important to know what his environment is and whether or not he will be sober at this time since he's been out for over a month. That's correct. Um, before the children are considered to be returned to him, those things need to be alleviated. That's correct. So you would you agree with me that it was unsafe to return either child to Mr. Tall, uh, McCauley at this time? That's correct. Um, and it would be contrary to their general welfare? That's correct. Do you know if Mr. McCauley's had any uh, visitation with the children? No, he has not had any visitation up to now. And I'm not sure that I asked you this earlier is mom exercising any visitation with the uh, children? Um, she's very spontaneous on visitation, um, but she missed six visitations in a row. Um, she did make last Wednesday's virtual visit um, and only stayed on for about 10 minutes and hung up and didn't connect back onto the virtual call. 
that to today, are you asking that either parent um, drug screen? Yes, sir. Which one? Uh, both parents need to um, hair follicle. And do you believe that both of them are residing in Pampa? Um, I believe they're both in Amarillo. Okay. So they would drug screen where? At Care Express. In the meantime, you're asking that the court continue the department is temporary managing concerns for both children? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Sagal, you said Ms. McCauley said she wanted to give conservatorship of the children to the aunt and uncle. Did you make her aware of the fact that that's not her decision at this time? She yes, that's when I told her. Yeah, I told her she needed to contact her attorney um, that, you know, that wasn't something we could decide for her. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. Jackson was he was in for a while and then he popped out. He's not back in the waiting room. So, uh, Mr. Nowak, any questions? Thank you, Judge. Just a few. Michelle, it's good to see you. And I enjoyed our conversation yesterday. Yes. Has Josh worked any services? Not that I'm aware of. Did he sign the service plan? Yes, he has signed both of his service plans. Talking to him yesterday, did he indicate to you that he is willing to work services? Yes, he did. Okay. You need to know where he lives though, correct? That is correct. Josh, I'm going to tell you to get me your address and I'll get it to Michelle or, or just text it to her. You've got her phone number. I don't need an answer. Just do it. Um, when's the last time, to your knowledge, Michelle, that Josh had visitation with his kids? Um, I do not believe he's had visitation with the kids since the removal. Gotcha. And I, I'm a little late in, in the process here with this case. Um, is there any visitation set up in any plan of service right now? Um, we can set up visitation, but there has not been. I did not receive this case also until October, um, and I was able to get visitation set up with Desiree, but I had, wasn't able to have contact with Josh and be able to set up those visitations. Would the quickest way to get that issue addressed would be for Josh to call or to text you? Yes. Okay. Um, let me double check that Michelle, that might be all I have. I think I heard you say that mom refused to work services as of February 27th of this year. She told you she's not going to work any more services. Yes, that's correct. You haven't heard that from Josh, correct? No, I have not heard that from Josh. What's your best advice to Josh? This is our hearing before the final hearing and he's got um, a lot of work to do. What's your best advice to Josh? To kick it in gear and get a hold of me and let's get services going. We can provide him a parent support worker that can also help um, get those resources and stuff that he needs um, to help along with everything. Michelle, thank you so much. Josh, I hope you heard all of that. And Judge, I'll pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Nowak. Uh, Mr. Harris. Yes, sir. Um, Ms. Slagle, um, uh, Joshua is now, he's five. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. And he's in pre-K. Yes, that's true. Okay. And uh, now his, at this point, his teachers uh, have been indicating some good progress by him and his coping skills and controlling his anger. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And do we get the same input from, uh, from Josh's therapist? Yes. Um, I did ask or recommend to start um, play therapy along with his behavioral therapy also um, to kind of help his progress along. Okay. And as far as placement goes, uh, I, I'm sure you visited with them. Did they indicate that, uh, that he's making some good progress? Yeah, he did backtrack a little bit um, last month. And that's when we visited about um, getting him also into play therapy and maybe some skills training. I asked her to get with the therapist and see if that was something that they could recommend or refer him to. Okay. All right. And uh, uh, Gracie is three. Am I right? That's correct. Okay. And uh, she's in preschool at, uh, is it at St. Matt's here in Pampa? Yes. Okay. And uh, does, is she getting good reports from her teacher with regard to her improvement and uh, uh, her being able to, to do substantially better? Yes, she is. She's doing wonderful there now. They're, they She's progressed wonderful at that daycare. Good. Good. Any psychotropic medications uh, uh, involved with either one of these kiddos? No. Good. No. Okay. And, uh, uh, uh I believe, Judge, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Slagle. Uh, Ms. Slagle, Josh has been diagnosed with ADHD. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Anyone else have further questions for Ms. Slagle? All right. Then, Mr. Alvey, did you have any further witnesses? I do not, Your Honor, arrest. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nowak, any witnesses? Call my client real quick, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Please. Nowak? Thank you so much, Judge. Josh, you heard Michelle Slagle testify, correct? Yes, sir. You know you've got an uphill battle to get some of these services knocked out in a very short time span, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. The court, I I'm, I believe the court's going to order you a drug test today at Care Express out on, I think it's on Grand Street. Uh, yeah, Ross. Okay, Ross. Right my, my yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll make it there by 3 o'clock today? Yeah, I'll get there, even if I have to walk. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> and let's just, and, and we're all going to know the results here in about a week. Um, what do you think the results will be? Um, I've struggled a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I have struggled a little bit, but I'm trying to get back on track here. All right. Well, well, we'll get a baseline today. I just want you to understand, Josh, that everyone you see on this screen wants you to win. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. The way you lose is not staying in contact with Michelle first and with me second. You understand that, correct? Yes, sir. Are you telling Judge Graham that you are going to work really, really hard on these services? I am. Okay. Um, would you like visitation with your children? Please. Well, and that's another you know reason to call Michelle and, and see yeah. what we can set up without the court's intervention. Okay. Josh, is there any questions you have of today's proceeding? No, I pretty I pretty much covered it all. Okay. It, it, it's all on your shoulders right now, but you have a lot of support. You understand that, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Get busy, my friend. Judge, that's all I have. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. McCauley, Mr. Noack may tell you not to answer this, but uh, you said you, when did you get out of jail? I got out in February. Okay. And what were you in jail for? Uh, aggravated assault and then continuous family violence. Okay. So are you, are, have you taken care of those charges or are you just out on? Yeah. On no, I, I took in care of them. So you're, you're through with I'm that. Taking you, care. you don't have any pending charges? No. Okay. And again, Mr. Nowak may tell you not to answer this, but I'm trying to figure out about your visitation. Are you telling the court that you've struggled some since you got out of jail or you you struggled in the past? I, I mean, I've struggled right when I got out. Okay. Because, no, that's okay. 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 Yeah, I just, that, that helps me figure out what we're going to do about your visitation. So, okay. Uh, Mr. Alby, did you have questions for Mr. McCauley? No, Your Honor. And Mr. Harris? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Mr. Nowak, any other witnesses? Uh, no other witnesses. Judge, I rest. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harris, did you have any witnesses? Judge, I do not. All right. Then, Mr. Harris, your recommendations? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, let's let's keep the placement uh, uh, as it is. It's safe and appropriate, Judge, for these uh, for these two kiddos. Uh, with regard to uh, if, if I can go ahead and tell you what I think about the visitation, obviously he needs to show some uh, uh, some compliance and uh, and uh, uh, clean drug screen before we consider that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes. Kelsey, anything to add? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Before I forget, Mr. McCauley, you said you'd get to your drug test even if you have to walk. Uh, the yes. Department of St. Francis will give you a ride, so you don't necessarily have to walk. If, if we're ordering you to get to a drug test and you don't have transportation, then then we've got to figure out how to get you there. You understand that? Yes, sir. I didn't know you, that, but now I do. Okay. Uh, do you know how to get a hold of Ms. Slagle? Uh, Michelle? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. I do. Okay. All right. If you, if you need a ride, just contact her and they'll arrange it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. And I don't know, Miss Slagle, I don't know if Mr. Alvin may have asked you this, but I can't remember. Would it be a continuing danger to the physical health and safety of the children to be returned to either parent today? Yes. Would it be contrary to their welfare to be returned to either parent today? Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right, then. I will continue the department's temporary managing conservator, continue the children's current placements. I'll order that Ms. McCauley's visitation be suspended until further court order. Uh, I will order both parents to Hair Strand and UA Drug Screen by 4 p.m. today at Care Express on Ross Osage and Amarillo. And I will order that if Mr. McCauley's UA is negative, then the department arrange some kind of visitation for him, depending on what, depending on what he tests positive for. If it needs to be virtually because of any danger to the children, that's fine with the court. So. Okay, I will set, as I said, I'll set a final in this case for June 5th, 2024. Uh, I will note that the dismissal date's not until July 1st, so there's a little bit of wiggle room there if we need it for any reason. So, 
Okay, that will conclude this hearing. We'll stand in recess. For those of you involved, I'll be back in just a few minutes to call another Gray County case. We're here on a placement review after, a placement final order. Review after final order. Mr. Albee's with us for the department. Casa is with us. Ms. Ratliff is with us representing the children. Mr. Michelson is with us representing the mother. Ms. Roby, who is with us. Mr. Adams is with us representing the father. Mr. Hathaway, who is not with us that I can see. There he comes. He just now came into the waiting room. Mr. Jackson represents the father, Mr. Portillo. He has texted me. He cannot get into the site. He was in our last hearing and couldn't get into that one either. So, um, Judge, it's a placement review. I don't anticipate any significant yeah. actions. I'm trying to find Mr. Portillo. He was with us earlier. I let him in. There, there. No, that's Mr. Hathaway. He must have fallen out. So uh, I'll watch the waiting room for him. The only person in my waiting room right now is Tim Coble. He's my St. Francis Ministries Pharmacy Specialist, John. Okay. All right. Mr. Alby, I believe we can proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call Mr. Tim Coble. Yes. And where are they currently placed? They are placed on a reunification with their mother. And um, just to be clear, the department was named, previously named Permanent Managing Conservator. And as part of that, we have placed the children in mom's possession. Correct. And is she um, taking care of the children appropriately today? Yes, we haven't encountered any issues. And um, part of the issue previously had been that she had been subject to having substance abuse issues. Um, my understanding is that she's been clean now for about a year. Does that sound correct? Yes, since uh, January of last year, and she has tested negative on, on every test since then. Uh, the most recent test was on February 29th. Uh, hair follicle and UA were negative. Um, have is she making sure that the children make all of their dental, medical, and mental health appointments? Yes. Um, any issues with either child at this time that we need to make the court aware of today? No, they're thriving and doing well, both of them. Um, has Candace been ordered to work any services at this time? Um, the services that she's asked to work are family counseling with uh, uh, with Tina Sauer, and uh, she's doing that with the children and herself uh, in family counseling. She's been doing that, and uh, and we've asked her to, you know, take steps to maintain sobriety. Uh, she's going to meetings, and she's staying in touch with the director of the rehab program that she had uh, attended last year. She working? She is working. And uh, the home that, that she has, is it appropriate for the children? It is. The father to one of the children, and I can't ever remember which one, is Mr. James Hathaway. Which child is he the father of? Uh, he is the father of Armani, and he goes by Vic. Okay. And does Mr. has Mr. Hathaway been ordered to work any services at this time? Yes, I met with him last month and we went over his uh, family plan and uh, he is being asked to do parenting classes with Fatherhood Fire, uh, to do BIP with Family Support Services, uh, Rational Behavior Therapy with Troy Timmons, um, and Individual Counseling with Dirk Milam. Um, and also to attend weekly supervised visits with Armani. And is he doing those services that you just outlined? Well, we're really just at the beginning of this. He, he's definitely visiting with Armani. He's had two visits, and we'll have a third one tomorrow. Um, and reportedly, those have gone well. Uh, there haven't been any issues with uh, appropriateness uh, with uh, his visits with Armani. Um, the, the other tests, the other uh, services that we're being asked, uh, that he's being asked to do, um, I've, I've got those lined up and ready for him just to begin doing them. But when I met with him last month, I literally met with him just a few days after his release from incarceration. So um, 
there was kind of a feeling of uh, not wanting to put too much on him that first month. Uh, so, um, so we're we're going to get him going with the rest of these classes uh, this this month, and he's been cooperative and is is willing to do you know what he needs to do. The father to the other child is Esteban Portillo. He was given some uh, possessory conservatory rights. Is he exercising visits at this time? Yes, he is. He's he's visiting with Abraham monthly. He comes up from New Mexico, and uh, we've we've kind of stepped up from supervised to unsupervised to overnight visits. Uh, the beginning of March was the first overnight visit. Um, he had a lot of family that came up, and they rented an Airbnb in Amarillo, and it was Abraham's first opportunity to meet a lot of people on that side of the family. And I was able to go and attend that uh, that time as well. Um, and see Abraham interacting with the family, and she was having a big time. Um, at this time, are you asking that the department continue as permanent managing conservator while we let Mr. Hathaway catch up on some services, but we leave the children with Miss Roby? Yes, and they have been with Miss Roby since December 8th. I'll pass the witness, Your uh, Thank you. Mr. Coble, uh, I, I didn't read anything in the report about Mr. Portillo's. Is, is he been asked to do services? Has he done what he needed to? Or um, Last month when I met them at the Airbnb, I did uh, go over um, his family plan with him. Uh, uh, besides the, the usual staying in touch and maintaining stable housing and employment, uh, participating in the monthly visits with Abraham. Um, and... That's it. That's it for Esteban. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, then, um, Mr. Michelson, did you have questions? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, Tim, if um, Candace's segment of uh, the case was discharged out, would, would the department lose jurisdiction over Mr. Hathaway and his relationship with the children? Um, I don't believe I can answer that, Mr. Michelson. I'm not sure. Okay. But you would say that she's pretty much achieved what the department wants her to achieve. Is that right? That's correct. And she's done well. Yes, Candace has done well. Okay. Um, what can Candace benefit from uh, a continued um, monitoring of, of her segment of the case? I believe the family counseling is important, um, especially now that uh, Armani has just recently started visiting with his father. Being in that family counseling setting with Candace and the two children would allow uh, for some monitoring of, of how Armani's feeling about uh, revisiting with his father and what Candace can do to help support them. Um, and we certainly believe her continued sobriety is very important. So making sure that she is participating in activities that promote her sobriety. So it's not a matter of Candace being on the hook until Mr. Hathaway catches up. Is that right? I, I don't think that the two are connected. Okay. That's just what I wanted to clear up. Um, pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Adams. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Koval, is it the department's intention to... Uh, Allow Mr. Or to as long as Mr. Hathaway follows through with services and continues to do well and with his visits to try to step up his contact with Armani as well. Um, yes, just like with with most parental visitations with children when um, when the issues have been addressed, you know, you work toward a stepped up visitation schedule that would then approach standard visitation. And you testified previous that he's seems cooperative at this point. Is that correct? Yes. We haven't had a whole lot of contact yet since he was just released uh, last month, but he he's shown a good attitude. And, uh, and I've also been in contact with uh, the parole office and there haven't been any issues there uh, that were communicated to me either. So he's been cooperative. Okay, good. Thank you. No further questions, John. All right. 
Ms. Ratliff? Uh, just one, just uh, Mr. Kova, with regard to when you were talking about what the department can continue uh, to help mom with, you mentioned the counseling and monitoring her ongoing sobriety. Is it your understanding that mom intends to continue with this counselor in family therapy with the children after the department or St. Francis is out of this case? That's my understanding. Right. Um, and as well as continue, at least at this point, um, she's maintained significant sobriety and she intends to continue with her sobriety um, program when she's, once the department's out. Do you have any concern that she's not going to do that? Not at this point. I mean, you know, we have a history of, of relapse and recovery, and that's our concern right. going forward with anyone, you know, this that she continue to take those steps and to realize that relapse is always a danger that has to be mitigated. Right. And is it is it your impression that mothers developed a positive support system around her and the children? She does have a lot of people around her. Um, and, she has a lot of siblings. And it also includes um, her brother and his wife, who were the former placement for the kids, correct? Yes. And they continue to be very involved in the children's lives. They go over there and spend the night. Um, so there's there's a lot of continued contact with the former placement. Great. Pass the witness. All right. Anyone have further questions for Mr. Hobel? Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Portillo never got back with us. And as I said, Mr. Jackson said he's can he cannot join our hearing anyway. I don't he's told me he'd tell me later what's going on. But all right then, Mr. Alvey, do you have any other witnesses? I do not, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Michelson witnesses? Yes, I'd like to call my client, Candace. All right, thank okay. you. Mr. Michelson. Thank you. Um, you've heard the testimony of uh, Tim Koval. Is there anything that you want to add to that testimony? Um, yeah, just that I would I would like for them to close my case today, um, just so me and my kids can get on the normal track of living. Um, and I do understand that um, they want... Uh, Vic to uh, continue his um, family plan, um, but I also do know that um, there's no going back for me um, in any situation, and I do continue. I do want to continue, and I'm going to continue doing our family counseling because I think it's good for um, all of us. Um, and I do continue doing the AA and um, talk to my therapist and I love it. But at the same time, I do know that if there's any um, signs of um, Vic relapsing or doing anything wrong, I know that I know what precautions that I have to take to keep my son safe. So far, um, it's gone great. Uh, Monty's um, opened up more since he's got to see his dad. Um, he's more um, interacting with school, like with students, uh, with about, you know, he has a dad now um, and he gets to see him. Um, so, it's good for him. What I like for his visits to um, be more. Yes, um, I would love that, especially um, in his sports. I, I believe that all little boys need their daddy um, when it comes to sports. So I would like to see that happen. Um, just mainly today, I just I would love for our case to close so we can get to just be a normal little family and to go on and enjoy life. Um, CPS has done great and helped me out a lot. I'm just uh, ready to be a full-time mom and not have them um, overseeing everything. <laughs> and w one of the things you're really looking forward to is the ability to dye your hair again. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I would, I would love to uh, do that. I haven't been able to. I've asked several times and every time I do it, I go in for a hair follicle, which is fine. I'll go in every time for that. Um, but I would love, I would love that opportunity again. Okay, so you just want to live a normal life with your children? Yeah, yes, sir, definitely, a hundred percent. I would love, I would love that. Okay, uh, pass the witness, Your Honor. Mr. Alvey, any questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Adams. No questions, Your Honor. Miss Ratliff. No questions. Okay. All right, Mr. Michelson, did you have any other witnesses? No other witnesses, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Adams, witnesses. Uh, briefly, I'd like to call my client, James Hathaway. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Adams. James, when were you released from uh, incarceration? On uh, February 28th. Okay, are you starting to get settled in, you know, now that you're yep. you're out? Yes, sir, I am. 
have your visitations with Armani been going good? Yes, sir. They've been great. Yes, sir. Okay. And you're, you feel pretty positive about how things are going at this point? Yes, sir, I do. And you're willing to do what the department asked you to do to help get more contact and, and be able to be more a part of Armani's life. Is that correct? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And so you're just asking that that, that continue and that that you have the ability to become more of his a part of his life. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. No no further questions, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Allen, any questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Michelson. All right. No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Ratliff? No questions. All right. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, Ms. Ratliff, I assume you didn't have any witnesses? No, just, just my recommendation. Okay. Go ahead, then. Uh, Judge, uh, first of all, I, I got to meet with mom and the kids yesterday over video in the home, and the kids are doing really, really well. Mom has done exceptionally well, um, and the whole reunification process has been wonderful. Um, I think it might be a good idea for us to go back to mediation now to work out final orders that get the department out and and work out the situation between the mother and the fathers. Um, I under, Though she's compliant and everybody would love for the department to get out today, I think that it would be prudent for us to have orders in place on these kiddos. So I would just request that today that we get, get that set up and hopefully get that done the next couple months. And in the meantime, the fathers can continue to work on services and stabling, being, getting stabilized and having visits. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cuss, anything to mm -hmm. add? No, Your Honor. I do not have anything to add. Okay. Thank you. All right. I will continue the department as permanent managing conservator, continue the, the current monitored return of the children to Mr. Roby. I will order the case back to mediation. I think that's a good idea. And uh, the parents can all talk to their lawyers. But uh, Ms. Roby, just so you understand, I don't think I have the authority today to just dismiss the case. And that's something you can discuss with Mr. Michelson. Uh, there's there's no pleadings on file to change what we're doing right now. So just to let you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not blind to what you're asking for. It's just in a, from a legal perspective, I don't think we're in a place where I could dismiss it today if I wanted to. So. But that's why y'all have lawyers. You can talk to them about that. So, okay, uh, I will set the next hearing in this case for September 18th, 2024. If we get to mediation, work something out, or if we're close to working something out and everybody's ready to go to a, another final, if, if, if the pleadings warrant it, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll move that hearing up. Otherwise, that next hearing on September 18th will be by Zoom like today's hearing. So parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance. In the Bunkenel uh, children, September 18th, we're on a to final see what hearing. time we'll have that hearing. Mr. Albee's with us for the department. Casa is with us. Mr. Harris is with us representing the child. Mr. Michelson is with us representing the father, Mr. Welsh. I don't know if he happens to be with Miss Welsh. I mean, with, yeah, Miss Welsh. If not, he's not in the waiting room. Miss Kincaid represents Erica Welsh, the mother who is with us. Miss Welsh, if you'd unmute, is, is Mr. Welsh with you? Or you can shake your head yes or no. No, she's saying no. So, okay. Your Honor, Mr. I'm sorry to interrupt. I believe he's currently incarcerated. Oh, that's right. I read that. Well, I, yeah, I kind of picked that up from the report. Where's he at? I think it's Lubbock County, uh, if I call, recall correctly. Yeah, I think you're right. I read that in the report. Sorry, I forgot that. Okay. Um, this case was set for 120. It's now 140. We'll proceed in Mr. Uh, Welsh's absence. Uh, Your Honor, I think that we, we, the parties have all agreed that this case should be extended. And so we would ask that you allow us an extension at this time. Mom has begun working services. She's made a good faith effort. She's not completed those services. So I think that that would meet the uh, extenuating circumstances. Okay. Measure. Uh, does anybody object to that? Does everybody agree that she's uh, made a good faith effort but needs more time? Everybody shaking no objection. Yes. Okay. Yes, right. Your Honor. We we. Okay, then I will uh, grant the department's motion to extend the case and retain the case on the court's docket. So we will treat today's hearing as a permanency hearing. With that, Your Honor, I'd ask that Miss Pate be allowed to, to be excused at this time. Okay. All right, Miss Pate, you are free to go. Thank you for being with us, and sorry that we kept you waiting. Thank you. Uh huh. And I would call Ms. Tori Cook. Yes. Now. And where are they currently placed? They are in a group home in Amarillo. And 
Is that placement meeting all of their needs at this time? Yes, they are. And um, do they have any special issues or special needs that have arisen that we need to make the court aware of today? They do not. Um, the children's mother is Miss Erica Welsh. Yes. She was ordered to work services. Has she begun working some services? Yes, yeah, she's actually, um, she's finishing or finished her parenting courses. Um, she finished her um, individual counseling, however, um, requested because of some personal issues to go back for a few sessions. Um, so we got her back in those. Um, she has finished her RBT. She has completed her OSAR for me. Um, and then they are currently doing family counseling together. When she completed her OSAR evaluation, uh, were there any recommendations from that OSAR evaluation? No, none other than individual counseling. Um, has she drug screened for you on a random basis? Yes, she has. And uh, do you have any concerns of any substance abuse at this time? Um, we do have small concerns um, due to the hair follicle in January. Um, it was positive for uh, methamphetamine, which she states could be possibly from exposure to Marshall. Um, but all of her UAs, the two UAs she's completed since then have been negative for me. So if she had a hair follicle drug screen in January, the end of January, uh, we're really a little early to ask for a new hair follicle drug screen. Would you agree? At this time, yes. Okay. Um, in the meantime, has Ms. Welsh established a, a residence that she would be safe for the children? Um, she is living with a friend right now and I believe working to get a deposit to get her own place, which would be safe for the children. But at this time, no resident of her own. <clears throat> and do you know if she's employed? Yes, she is. And does she have transportation? Not her personal transportation, but she's able to get rides where she needs to go. <laughs> well, because of the positive drug screen in January and the lack of a, a residence, would you agree with me that it would be unsafe um, for the children uh, to be returned to her at this time? At this time, yes. And that it would be contrary to their general welfare? Yes, sir. Um, children, the father to Madeline is deceased, correct? Yes. And the father to Hudson is Marshall Welsh? Yes, sir. And is it your, to your knowledge, is he incarcerated in Lovett County? Yes, I actually called this morning to confirm he's still incarcerated. Do you know what he's incarcerated for? And DWI. Okay. And uh, prior to him being incarcerated, was he taking advantage of the services that you were offered to him? No, he was not. So even if he was released, it would not be safe to return uh, Hudson to him. Correct. And, and would you agree with me that Hudson and Madeline are bonded siblings and it would be contrary to their welfare to split them at this time? Yes, sir. And so it would be contrary to their welfare to return uh, Hudson to uh, Mr. Welsh. Yes. And dangerous at this time because he doesn't have a place to put them since he's incarcerated. Correct. So are you asking that the court continue? The department is temporary managing conservator and we extend the case. Um, give Miss Welsh an opportunity to become a little more stable and complete whatever services she may like. Yes, sir. Pass with me, Sean. Right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Cook, I read in the report that uh, Maddie's on one psychotropic for anxiety and uh, Hudson is on two psychotropics for insomnia and ADHD. Both uh, both seen Dr. V. Is that correct? That is correct. Are they seeing Dr. V at least every 30 days? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ms. Kincaid, questions? Thank you, Your Honor. Has Ms. Welsh stayed in contact with you? Yes, ma'am. Has she been willing to work any services that, that have been requested of her? Yes, she has. Okay. And she's been cooperative with you? Yes. Okay. So basically, 
you know, she doesn't have too much left on her services. We just need some more time for her to uh, demonstrate to the department some stability. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Thank you, Mr. Michelson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Cook, uh, Marshall had a case plan, correct? Yes, sir. And you reviewed that case plan with him? Yes, I have. And he signed it? Yes. Did did any of the services get scheduled? Yes, um, he did schedule um, an OSAR, but was a no-show. He did schedule his RBT, was also a no-show. And he did schedule um, orientation for parenting, but was also a no-show. Did he offer any reasons why he didn't appear for those appointments? Not to me. He, I think one day he said he had court and another time he was incarcerated. But other than that, he just said that he couldn't figure out the link. And I did offer to help him out with that if he needed it. Do you have an idea how long he will be in custody in Lubbock? Um, I am not sure. I guess um, Erica heard from him today and he's hoping to be out within the next three weeks. But I'm not sure if that's correct. Are there any services he can complete while he's in custody? Um, no, not in that county. Okay. Pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. We won't have any further questions for Ms. Cook. No, Your Honor. Mr. Abbey, any other witnesses? I do not have any further witnesses, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Kincaid. No witnesses, Your Honor. We rest. Thank you, Mr. Michelson. Witnesses. No witnesses. We rest. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Witnesses. None, Your Honor. No, sir. All right, Mr. Harris, your recommendation. Your Honor, I uh, believe that I Mr. agree to the Mr. extension Harris. as well and Mr. to leave Mr. all Harris. current orders in place. All right, Mr. Harris, you completely broke up. We Judge, didn't hear can you hear me? Barely. We, we didn't hear any of that. Okay. Judge, can you hear me now? I'm in a dead spot, uh, I think. Yeah, you're better. Yeah, go ahead again. Okay. Judge, just to remain, all the current orders to remain in, in effect and for the 180-day uh, extension to be granted by the court. Okay. All right, then. And cost anything to add? No, Your Honor. All right, all right then. Uh, I will, as I said, I granted the motion to extend and retain on the court's docket. Uh, I will continue the department's temporary management conservator and continue the children's current placements. We'll have the next permanency hearing on July 31st, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance of July 31st to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. All right, this was our last hearing of the day, so we will stand in recess. Y'all have a good rest of your week. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Jack. I'll see you Friday.